What's up, friends? It's Volt Farcore. Welcome to uh, Smogon. <laughs> yeah, we're on Smogon right now because um, the uh, tier update for May 2020 came out a few days ago. I'm a little late to this since I kind of started procrastinating, but uh, we're going to take a look at this. Now, basically what this does is it uh, shows you the percentage of uh, Pokemon used. So let's say, I don't know, let's take a certain Pokemon. Let's throw Pikachu, for example. Now, Pikachu is not used instead of OU, but Pikachu is used instead of PU. So let's say Pikachu has like a I don't know, a 6% um, play rate. So 6% of battles, you're probably going to get a Pikachu. That's, you know, a rough guesstimation, though. But um, this is the percent that the Pokemon are used inside of this month. And uh, depending on how good the Pokemon is or how bad they are, they can actually drop to a lower tier or get raised up to a higher tier. And we're going to go through, like, the top 30 of the Pokemon. So let's get into it. So as you see right here, um, Marty posted this. And... Um, right there, if the Pokemon has uh, less than 4.5, it's going to uh, get a drop off, which uh, which makes sense. I think it's uh, it's necessary to make Pokemon go to lower tiers if they're not used as much, and if Pokemon are used too much, like a few Pokemon inside of the OU tier, then they probably should get uh, at least a uh, suspect tested to see if they're worthy of going to the next tier, or just uh, ban the thing that makes him broken. Like, uh, Doug Trio was only broken because he had uh, his ability being Arena Trap, and there are a few other Pokemon that have uh, some abilities and some moves that make him stronger. So instead of just banning the Pokemon, you can just uh, move their moves or stop them from using that. But we're going to start down here at uh, number 40, which is Mamoswine. Now, I'm doing this just because I'm going to go into the... Uh, the drop off, so anything below uh, three percent usage, I don't really think it's necessary to uh, cover them. I'm pretty sure he does cover it all the way until like a hundred or something. Now there's quite a bit. So as you see, like Doug Trio is not getting used, Rotom Fan's not getting used. These are like the below one percent things. So we're gonna go inside of things that are above two percent, being uh, Mamoswine, and we're gonna go up. So we have Mamoswine at uh, three point two four one percent usage rate. If I don't know anything about the Mon, I'll probably just, uh, you know, scoot over and move to the next one. But Mamoswine, I actually think it's a pretty good Mon instead of OU. It was a sus suspect tested instead of UU since it was really strong. And I'm pretty sure it got banned since it's inside of OU now. And um, it's getting used decent. Like, this isn't an insane usage rate. But uh, I think Mamoswine is strong enough. He can make a dent. He has um, some priority. A pretty good move. Like, pretty good move pull. Icicle Crash is really strong. You can also run Icicle Spear. There's a bunch of things you can do with them. Now, if Pokemon is actually eh, really good, I might uh, go inside of a showdown myself and uh, cover the set or show you guys it. But I'll just go through them. Uh, Prismarina. Now, Prismarina, I, in my opinion, I think it's kind of slept on. You can put throat, throat Spray on that thing, and it can do a bunch. Choice Specs is really strong. I think, I think that's another Pokemon that actually was... Uh, banned from UU since it was too broken, but uh, I don't know too much about it. Alone with Ninetales, it can set up the Aurora Veil, which is, uh, I'm pretty sure, kind of like Light Screen and Reflect at the same time, so that's pretty strong, but it only works in the uh, in the snow or the hail. Uh, we have Gyarados. Now, we're getting very close to the uh, higher tier. When we start getting up inside like the 30, it kind of just like goes all the way up, but uh, yeah. So, uh, Gyarados is a really strong Mon. It was a lot better when uh, Dynamaxing was uh, well able to be used instead of OU. Since it could use Bounce to uh, use Max Airstream, get plus one speed, and then spam its uh, Moxie ability if it kills something. It could even Dragon Dance if it wanted to and take out a bunch of Mons. Very scary. And it's still a formidable, a formidable Pokemon, but not uh, insanely good. And uh, next Pokemon is Necrozma. Now, I actually think Necrozma is UU, but I don't know. Um, I don't really run into them that much, so I'm not really going to cover it. Crawdont. Now, Crawdont's a very strong Mon. Having the um, adaptability ability. <laughs> adaptability ability. At least that's what I think its ability is called. It pretty much makes uh, stab moves, like uh, instead of doing 1.5 times more damage, it does like 2% more damage. I mean, a 0.2 or no, 2.0. <laughs> so it does a lot more damage with... Uh, Stab attacks, and it's a really good type. Being water and dark makes it so it has some really powerful moves for stab attacks. You can kind of just throw, like, close combat on this thing, Aqua Jet, uh, Crab Hammer, or Liquidation, and uh, then, like, knock off or something. 
So it's a really strong mon, and I can tell why it's uh, so high up here. All right, now we have Kel um, not not Keldeo, <laughs> Ditto. Now Ditto, I'm actually pretty sure dropped down to UU inside of this month because people weren't really using it as much. Probably because people are um, taking a different game plan inside of OU these days. Before, inside of like previous generations, it was like set up with sword stance and then you can sweep. But now it's kind of have this weird stally game, which uh, the number one Pokemon on this list, uh, which you probably know what it is by now, but uh, I'll keep the surprise a secret, um, has kind of ruined the meta and uh, Ditto isn't as good. If, if that Pokemon does get taken out of OU though, or at least the uh, parts of it that are broken, I think Ditto could uh, rise in popularity. Um, we have Keldeo. Now, Keldeo is a, uh, I don't use Keldeo that much, honestly. It's strong, has some good special attacks, choice specs is strong, but I prefer to run other mons. But it is used quite a bit. Like, there's a big uh, cutoff between the uh, 3.834 on Ditto and the 5.482 on Keldeo. And then immediately after that, we have Grimace Gnarl. Honestly, this mon, in my opinion, doesn't really do much for me. I'm not a big fan of uh, just setting up dual screens. I think that's all the Pokemon's good for. I have seen like some Assault Vest sets and some of those kind of things, but it's, uh, you know, since it has dual screens and the Prankster ability, it's good for that, I guess. Uh, then Mimikyu, which uh, <laughs> I don't know why Mimikyu's so strong. Or, well, no, I know why Mimikyu's strong, but I don't know why it's so high up here. It uh, Whenever I use a Mimikyu, it doesn't really do much for me. Like, a Pokemon that gets plus two should be able to do more damage, but it just doesn't really do as much damage. So, maybe that's because the Pokemon's really uh, popular. Who knows? Alright, the next Pokemon, which is number 30, is uh, Halucha. Now, Halucha is one of my favorite Pokemon to use inside of Hyper Offense. It has um, an ability that makes it so when it loses its item, it gets plus two speed. You can go for Swords Dance. There are a bunch of sets. I'm pretty sure I have a... Uh, set to showcase on Halucha, which uh, might be out, or it might come out later. I don't know, I don't really have a schedule of my uploads. But uh, it's a strong mon, and uh, very, very fun to use on Hyper Offense. Um, then we have Jirachi, which actually has quite a bit of sets. I'm pretty sure Jirachi's good instead of like every single gen. Uh, Steel Psychic's a really good type, like really good. And uh, has a good a bunch of attacks you can use. You can do the cheesy set with the Serene Grace and just spam iron head and try to flinch people to death but there are other sets you can do and mess around and i think that's why it has a uh, pretty high usage rate but uh, we're creeping up there slowly but surely uh hatterene's next now hatterene is a really weird mon it's fairly slow but uh i don't know why whenever i face a hatterene like it's only thing that the only thing that this pokemon can do is just be a magic bouncer i rarely get beat up by this thing Probably because I don't like to uh, give it, like, room to breathe. Since if this thing gets up the opportunity to, like, set up call mines or anything like that, it's probably going to beat you up. But I just uh, really don't have much trouble with this Mon. But it's used quite a bit, which I think is pretty cool. Then Pelper, which is kind of just a given. If, if like, there if there's a rain Pokemon, Pelper just has to be good. And uh, Pelper by itself is actually pretty good. You could run, like, a choice spec set. But most people just slap a damp rock on it. <laughs> and, um... Put in a rain dance, no, put in a swift swim mon, and uh, you can uh, do some pretty crazy stuff. Since there are quite a bit of good swift swim mons in this gen. Then we have Terrakion. Now, personally, I I don't think I've ever used Terrakion on a team. It's pretty strong since um, I'm pretty sure it's one of the fastest mons inside of the gen. Or at least inside of like the OU tier. Yeah, I think Zero Aura is number one, and then it's like Dragapult, and then it's Terrakion or something. I don't know, he's like up there inside the speed, so uh, he's really good, and a really good attack stat, but I just don't really use him that much. I'll probably make a video on him, since I see a lot of people beating me up with him, or I experience a lot of people doing that. Then we have Tyranitar, which uh, kind of shot up a little bit. Now, um, personally, I don't really like using Tyranitar that much, since if I want to put down a sand, I usually use Hippowdon, but Tyranitar is a really strong mon. I just think a... Uh, Four times weakness to fighting is a little deadly since I don't know why. I always go against Conkelders and uh, I really don't like getting mock punched. <laughs> but it's a good mon. And um, if it had a pursuit like it had inside of previous gens, I'm not going to say it would be a lot better. But I really miss pursuit. It's a really cool move to have. You can put on Weavile, you can put on Tyranitar. 
bunch of cool Pokemon you can put it on, and it's really strong. But uh, at the moment, Tyranitar was, like, considered, I think, for going inside of UU. But uh, then, like, a movement happened with Blunder and Pokeaim, and they tried to save Tyranitar from dropping down to the UU tier, even though I think he's a little too strong for that. He, uh, he has some pretty good stats, and I think he would kind of uh, cleave through everything down there like a like a very powerful knife. <laughs> okay, um, then on to Gengar. Now, Gengar is um, a Pokemon that I think is, well, actually just really good. It's a glass cannon, like probably the zenith of a, gra of a glass cannon. It has extremely high special attack, very good speed, and everything else is just not that good. <laughs> but um, you can use it as a Trickmon if you want to be that kind of guy. You can use it as just a straight-up special attacker. You can throw a Choice Scarf on it. There's, like, anything you can do with this Mon. It's, it's very versatile, and it's really good to have on the team. All right, then we have Mew. <laughs> Speaking of versatile, Mew is, um, well, I'm pretty sure it can learn almost every single move in the game, besides, like, special moves, or, or is that just TMs? Well, I know it can learn every single TM, but it might be able to learn... No, nah, yeah, I think it's just TMs. But uh, learning almost every single possible move is uh, pretty cool. It uh, definitely gives the opportunity for some crazy game plans. People can do, like, Sword Dance, Brave Bird, Flare Blitz, Close Combat... People can do like a bulk upset where they um, do body press. You can do um, like a red card with stealth rock set. This, like this Pokemon, it just has so many things that, that, that you can do. You never know what you're getting into with this Mon. Like, it's just crazy on how many sets it can run. Since it can learn almost every single TM. Well, every single TM and quite a bit of moves. <laughs> then we have Cloyster, which is like the bane of my existence because I never, like, it's either I don't run priority. Or I run a Pokemon that has priority and is weak to Ice Shard. <laughs> yeah. But Cloyster is really strong. You can do um, the King's Rock set. You can do the Focus Sash set. You can even do the White Herb set. Anything you want to do, this Mon's just really strong. And having the uh, Skill Link ability makes his Ice Shards and Rock Blasts really strong. And it, uh, it beats me up quite a bit. Speaking of a Pokemon that beats me up, we got Togekiss. Now this is just like Jirachi. It has the Serene Grace ability which makes um, moves that have an effect, like, I don't know, 30% chance to burn, it gets, like, doubled, I'm pretty sure. So, um, Togekiss has access to a move called Air Slash, which has, like, a 30% chance to flinch, and that gets doubled, so you have a 60% chance to flinch, and it is <laughs> very funny. Very funny, but it's kind of annoying. You can just do Scarf with this thing, and even if you have a Pokemon that you think is going to be able to, like, Oko this thing, nah, you're just going to get flinched. And die. Or slowly whittle down like a piece of wood. Alright, the next Pokemon is um, our first 10% usage rate Mon, which is uh, Cinderace. Now, I think Cinderace is a really cool Mon. It's definitely my favorite starter, just because I like the whole, I don't know, style of it. It's really kind of cool looking Mon, and a soccer player sick. But uh, there's a bunch of things you could do with Cinderace. If you really want to be fast, you could do Choice Scarf, but I think that's kind of trash. Um, court change, if you really want to get rid of those hazards. Like, Choice Band is pretty sick, too, because you can just do High Jump Kick, U-Turn, uh, Sucker Punch, and Pyro Ball, even though I always miss Pyro Ball. But, um, there's a bunch of cool sets you can do with Cinderace. I think it's a really strong Mon. I'm just waiting for it to get, um, Libro. It's, um, Hidden Ability, which, uh, is just like Protean with Greninja. It turns into the type that it, um, well, of the move that it uses. So if it uses, like, U-Turn, it's going to turn into a Bug Type, which is pretty cool. And it's definitely going to lead to a lot of mind games. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that. This thing is going to be either really broken and get banned, or it's going to uh, just be like a top tier threat, which is pretty cool. All right, then we have Melmetal, which was actually a, um, I'm pretty sure it got shoved back inside of Ubers. It got like suspect tested to see if it fit inside of OU. And I really wish it fit inside of there because um, this thing um, was a pretty good check to the, um, most annoying Mon inside of the entire uh, OU tier, I was able to, uh, you know, use this thing quite a bit, and just, um, you do use Double Iron Bash, and uh, it helped take out the monster itself, which I will get into, but uh, we'll save that. Um, then we have Mandibuzz, which is a very strong Mon, you can just run Foul Play, Knock Off, to be honest, it's a little telegraph what it's going to do, it's kind of obvious, they usually have U-Turn, Defog, Roost, Knock Off, or Foul Play, and I think a Mon that only has, like, one good set is a little predictable, but, you know, the Mon is just so tanky, 
and it can just get in there, defog, roost, and uh, if it has foul play, take out um, a noob that's just uh, spamming like Sword Stance or something. But it's a strong mon, and it's always been good since it has really good defense and good HP. And then we have Kiram, which um, is a mon I really think I should use more of, because it is very strong. <laughs> Ice types have a lot of coverage, and there are a lot of types out there, especially instead of uh, OU, that are very weak to ice type moves and all that, so you can kind of just beat them up. And if you want to slap Freeze Dry, which is uh, very weak, but it is a move that is also super effective on water types, so if you have like a, a Seismitoad, which is very common, you can do that, and it's four times effective, and it's going to beat it up. But Kiram is strong. Um, again, Scarf isn't that good. Specs is like one of the only good sets, but there are a bunch of good things. You can do Earth Power, Ice Beam, Draco Meteor, Freeze Dry. It, it probably has other sets too, but I haven't really done much research. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one, which is inside the 13s now, being uh, Conkelder, or Conkelder, or Conkelder, however you want to pronounce it. I never know how to pronounce this dang Pokemon's name. But it's really strong. It has a Guts ability, which pretty much just like solidifies the Pokemon as a dangerous attacker. Having a priority and Guts is very strong, so you don't have to worry about people burning you since, you know, that's good for you. And um, you have some pretty good defense, like I said, priority, and you also can slap Facade on, which is a move that does more damage if you are status effect, and also you have your Guts bonus, so it does a bunch of damage. If you want, you could even put Earthquake on it, which I don't see too much, but I'm pretty sure you can, uh, like, two-hit KO Clefable. I'm not sure, I don't, um, I don't spend much time on the Calc. All right. On to the Kamo'o, or Kamo'o, -o, another Pokemon I can't pronounce, but this is a very strong Mon. There are a bunch of sets you can use with it. I've seen Lumberry, I've seen um, a special set, a physical set. It's really strong. It's, um, you know, having a four times weakness to Fairy is pretty dangerous since Fairies are broken, but it, you know, it, it's a good Mon, and I, I think it's definitely worthy to use. has a bunch of good strong attacks, and you never know what it's going to have. Uh, the next Pokemon is inside the 16, since um, for some reason there's this giant leap from Kamo'o to uh, Toxapex. Now Toxapex, it's just a it's just an annoying Mon to go against. I don't think it's broken or anything, but it's just kind of not fun to go against. Now, the low-level Toxapexes are kind of fun to play against because they always think Baneful Bunker is optimal to have on a top Toxapex, but um, usually, well, personally, I don't like using Baneful Bunker on Toxapex, I prefer to run something like Scald, uh, Toxic Spikes, um, maybe Toxic and Haze, but you can slap other things on too, or or even Knock Off, since uh, knocking off someone's ability is always helpful. But it's a good mon, and uh, it'd probably never like drop down to any other tier, since it has like, solidified itself as a painfully annoying mon to go against, but uh, it's kind of like necessary. It's, it's very strong. But um, there's a Pokemon that has been um, kind of beating up a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of been beating up the entire gen. To, or the, yeah, yeah, the entire OU tier gen. <laughs> All right, on to uh, Hippowdon. Now, uh, Hippowdon is personally my favorite sand setter since it's very tanky. And I kind of like tanky mons to throw with physical attackers. Now, Hippowdon being a full, uh, you know, ground type <laughs> is very good to switch into like Zero Aura and all that. And unless it has Grass Knot. But if it doesn't, you can kind of just go in there, get your Stealth Rocks up if you want. You also have, um, what's the move called? It's the one that phases them out. I'll remember it. Um, oh yeah, Whirlwind. Duh. <laughs> I always wondered why it has Whirlwind, but it does. It just kind of yeets them out of there. And, you know, it's just a kind of an, an annoying tanky mon. It sets up sand. Any Pokemon that has an ability that sets up any kind of weather effect is pretty fun because you can throw on a Pokemon that has a Sand Rush, Slush Rush, Swift Swim, Chlorophyll, get plus two speed or something, and be able to sweep through all the mons with your uh, powerful Swords Dance, most likely Pokemon that goes with the uh, Rain Dance Setter or Dragon Dance. Um, Dragon Dance now. <laughs> the Weather Setter. <laughs> all right. Um, now on to uh, Bisharp and Hydragon, which... Um, very different, but uh, two dark types together is always pretty cool to see. Bisharp is a very strong Mon. Having the uh, Defiant ability is something that is always fun to slap on your team, because you can put Stealth Rocks up, and then someone's going to be like, oh, 
I'm just going to blow off these stealth rocks. <laughs> blow. But you can actually switch into your uh, Defiant Bisharp, which will eat up that Defog, which actually lowers your evasion, but the Defiant ability makes it so if you have a stat that gets lowered, your attack gets um, risen two stages, which is very sick and uh, makes the Pokemon very strong with Sucker Punch. And you can even throw on Swords Dance. Most of the time, I like to do something like Iron Head, Swords Dance, um, Knock Off, and, uh, and Sucker Punch. But you can do other things too. You can throw on like black glasses to make dark type moves even stronger. It's just a strong mon and uh, I've been able to take out a bunch of people with this mon. <laughs> on to the next dark type which is Hydreigon. Now this mon is, um, well, <laughs> very strong. Very, very strong. Now this is a Pokemon that has a four times weakness to Fairy again. But this dude is just freaky. It, like Scarf personally is the one I prefer to use. People always think they can hit you with a Moonblast, but you're just going to go on there with a Scarf and hit him with a Flash Cannon, and uh, most of the time you're going to be able to take things out, unless it's like a Special Defense Clef or something, but uh, a Dragon's really fun to use, and I like using it. I haven't seen it too much, I don't know if it's been like falling off or something, but I still think the Pokemon is totally viable and very good. Okay, we're inside the top 10 now. Um, <laughs> it's uh, slowly but surely raising to a some pretty crazy numbers, but uh, let's move on to uh, number 10. So number 10 is uh, Rotom Heat. Now Rotom Heat, if you guys uh, didn't know, actually I think um, these top Pokemon, I'll probably show you guys the set on some of them. So I'll finish talking about them and then I'll move on to the set, unless I don't have a set for them. So um, Rotom Heat is an extremely strong mod. Definitely the best Rotom. I'm pretty sure Rotom Wash was the best instead of like Gen 7 or something. But uh, Rotom Heat, you can just... Um, slap heavy duty boots on it and give it like a uh, will-o-wisp nasty plot overheat volt switch or something like that and it makes it very easy to just get in there nasty plot up if they want to switch out you have levitate and levitate's always a good ability to have it's just a very strong mon and a fire type is always good to have inside of uh the very frequently used pokemon so let me go on showdown and actually show you uh the set for a couple of these mons all right here's the rotom set it's very very simple, not at uh, any kind of crazy levels of originality. If you see a Rotom, it's probably going to be something like this. If you want to, you can run Discharge if you want to try to get that Paralysis instead of Volt Switch. But I think Volt Switch is a little bit better since I like uh, I like moves that can uh, switch out. It's very uh, helpful to uh, get out of there if you want to make a prediction, but uh, not uh, you know make a like a full committal play. And um, I prefer Toxic, since um, Will-O-Wisp is not personally my preferred, but, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, but let's get back into the uh, review of the stats. Alright, um, we're back looking at the stats. <laughs> so, um, we finished off Rotom Heat. We're going to move on to Aegislash. Now, Aegislash has been good um, inside of the last couple generations he's been in. I'm pretty sure he was Ubers instead of Gen 6, and Gen 7, I'm pretty sure he was Quick Band instead of Ubers, but instead of this Gen, it's actually good, because I do not think he's an Ubers mon, he's not that good. There are a bunch of things you can do to beat him up, he's a very strong mon that has a bunch of possibilities, which um, I'll probably get into later. Actually, maybe I'll just talk about it instead of going on Showdown. Hopefully you guys have a basic understanding of some sets, and uh, you have a good imagination to visualize this, but uh, yeah. So Aegislash is a strong mon, you can do special with it, do things like uh, Shadow Sneak, um, Shadow Ball, um, Flash Cannon, uh, and some other coverage thing if you want to. Slap some choice specs on that, strong special attacker, very good. What I really like about the Pokemon is um, it has, well, it has its ability stance change, which, make, which makes it so when it uses like a stat buffing move or a protection move, it goes inside this crazy defense mode. But when it, when it attacks, it goes inside this crazy glass cannon mode, which is very strong for like mind games, I guess, if you want to do that. But it's um very cool. Absolutely epic to use because it also has physical sets, which I don't see as much since a uh, special is better in my opinion. But uh, I'm pretty sure its attack and its special attack are balanced, so you never know what you're going to get with this Pokemon. You can do something like uh, Shadow Claw, Shadow Sneak, Iron Head, and uh, Sword Stance or something. There are a bunch of sets you can do. There's even a tanky one which has a uh, like um, Substitute, Shadow Ball, Left um, Lefties with um, 
Um, what's another thing it has on it? Actually, let me just go find that tanky set. All right, here we are. Here's the tanky Aegislash. This is Bipolar Sword, because he's confused what he wants to be. And this is a Substitute Toxic King Shield Shadow Ball, and this is a Special Defense um, Aegislash. You can run a bunch of Aegislashes, and they are a very versatile Pokemon to use. All right, so that was Aegislash. Let's move on to uh, Dracovish. Now, this is a Mon that I'm not going to be covering on Pokemon Showdown, since I hate to use this Mon, and I refuse to use it, since it is the cheapest Mon inside the entire gen. So, uh, Dracovish has uh, one thing he does, and one thing alone. He uses Ficious Rend. So, Ficious Rend is a very strong Water-type move, which gets powered up if it goes first. Dracovish also has the ability Strong Jaw, which makes Bite-type moves do more damage. It's also a Water-type move, so if you're inside the rain, it can do more damage. And if you really want to, you can uh, slap a Choice Band on it to do even more damage. But I prefer to, uh, well, I, at least I hear that it's better to run a Choice Scarf since um, it makes you uh, faster than most Mons, and since the move does more damage if you're faster, it's better to do that. This um, move is painfully stupid. Like, it is... <laughs> this Mon has kind of just defined the metagame. I really don't think it's that good. Like, there are counterplays to it. Well, there are a few, but you have to make some hard reads with it, or else you're going to get clobbered by it. Even a Pokemon like Ferrothorn, which is a little bit uh, higher inside the usage, gets absolutely manhandled by this thing, if it is like an adamant choice band, I'm pretty sure it two shots it with Ficious Ren. That is just how stupid this Mon is. But uh, you can whittle it down, and um, there are other Mons that uh, are very good. Like uh, number four on this list, which I will cover later. Alright, moving on, we have Ferrothorn. Now, Ferrothorn has uh, been a very tanky, just a tanky Mon. It just does what it usually does. Puts up Spikes, Stealth Rocks, Leech Seed. That's pretty much all it does. It's tanky, it lives forever. It can kind of just be a really good support mon. A lot of Pokemon inside of uh, Generation 7 ran Hidden Power Fire. Just to take out this one mon, since it is so metagame defining, it's like never not good. It's just, it's really tanky and it has very few weaknesses. It has like two weaknesses. One of them is a five, um, one of them is four times, but, uh, you know, <laughs> just take a Pokemon that uh, resists fire and there you go. Your Ferrothorns look good. Um, all right, moving on, we have Extra Drill, which, um, as I probably, probably already said, um, it pairs really good with uh, a Sand Setter. Actually, I don't think I said that. Well, there are Pokemon out there that have uh, abilities that make them faster in the sand, and Extra Drill is one of those. It has Sand Rush, which makes it times two speed inside the sand. You can put a Focus Sash on this thing. You can uh, do Leftovers if you really want to. You can do Life Orb. Um, I don't know. There are there, there, There's probably like a Choice Band set, but that's probably trash. Who knows? But um, Extra Drill is just a really strong Mon. even has Rapid Spin if you really want to. Uh, well, most people run that. It's usually Earthquake, Rapid Spin, Sword Stance, and Iron Head. That's usually what I see with the Extra Drill with Sand Rush. But if you really want to and just run this thing normally, you can also have its other ability, which is Mold, Blake, Mold Breaker, which makes it so abilities don't work. So if someone wants to switch in like a Rotom, you can absolutely clobber it with an Earthquake, and it's always very funny because they think they're all protected, but they're not. All right, all right, moving on, we have Zer Zera Aura, which is the fastest mon inside the gen, or, or fastest mon inside of OU. I'm pretty sure, um, like, uh, Ninjask is faster, but no one uses Ninjask since that's an NU Pokemon, and this is OU. <laughs> but uh, Zera Aura is extremely strong. It is a mythical Pokemon, so it has very good stats. It has a Photon, um, no, not Photon Geyser. It has Plasma Fist, which is a strong electric-type move. It has Play Rough, it can run. Close combat, knock off, bulk up. You can do life orb, you can do leftovers. There's a bunch of sets you can do with this Pokemon. It is an extremely strong Mon, and I use it quite a bit. But um, it does have counters, but it does have ways to counter those counters. And one of his counters is uh, Seismitoad, which is a ground type. And the only reason this thing is so high, being number four, is this stupid Pokemon right here, being Dracovish. Yes, Vicious Ren being so broken, people are using Seismitoad which has pretty mediocre stats, but it has the water absorbability. It has Stealth Rocks, so that means you can switch it in when you know that a Dracovish is going to use Fish's Rend, and you get your Stealth Rocks up for free. To be honest, there are other um, water absorb mons, like, uh, uh, well, I, um, I'll just go and look at some, I guess. Alright, so here are all the mons with water absorb. So as you guys see, Seismitoad does not have the best stats, but Dracovish here with a strong draw ability 
it's, it's, it's necessary to have a water absorber on if you know that you're going to go against a Dracovish. It's just so painfully strong. So Seismitoad is the one that's used most often, but you have other mons that have water absorbed too. You can use all these. And then, of course, if you're playing national decks, you have these mons. So as you guys can see, there are not that many mons, like there are a few, but not too many that have water absorb. So you definitely want to run Seismitoad if you know that you're going to go against a Dracovish. All right, after Seismitoad, we have uh, the top three. So all of these Pokemon, as you can see, number one is just painful. Just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that later. So number three is Dragapult, which is um, a very strong mod. I do have a series coming up, which this video will probably be um, posted before that, but it is called Set Showcase, where I showcase a set for a mon, and the first one was Dragapult, so if you guys want a more in-depth thing on sets for Dragapult, be sure to watch that video. I'm going to try to do um, one of those videos for every single um, optimal mon, so uh, a Pokemon that's used quite a bit, I'll probably try to do a uh, showdown showcase, on, no, not a showdown showcase, a set showcase to uh, show you guys how the mon works and uh, what kind of sets usually people use on it. But I'll just do a uh, basic breakdown. This Pokemon is really fast. Extremely fast. Has a good special attack. Better normal attack, but people run Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt and Draco Meteor on it more often since people prefer special attacks, which is understandable. <laughs> but yeah, Dragapult is an extremely strong mon, and it was actually number one inside the rank um, when the game first came out, but other Pokemon uh, came in here. So uh, right um, behind it, or right in front of it, is uh, Corviknight. I can understand why this Pokemon is up so high. It is a very tanky Mon. I think this Pokemon is um, very good. Personally, I prefer to use different Defoggers and Roosters, being um, Mandibuzz. Since I just like Mandibuzz so much, it's a, it's a good Mon. But Corviknight's really good since it's a Steel type along with a Flying type, so you can, you know, switch it in on people just spamming Draco Meteor all over the place. It is a really good Mon. It has a bunch of good things. It has pressure as well, so you can PP stall things if you really want to be that guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Corviknight is a very strong Mon, and I'm pretty sure it's near number one inside the tournament um, ranking. But, inside of um, this ranking, number one. Oh boy. Clefable the Savage. Alright. So, as you guys can see, there is a crazy amount of percent in the uh, difference department. Yeah, yeah, there's a uh, 28 with uh, Corviknight, and then Tew just gets launched up all the way to a 45%. <laughs> that is absolutely horrific, and um, that, that means you see this mon half of the games you play, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> now, the reason this thing is so good is due to one move being teleport. It can just go for Wish. Go for Teleport, which has a negative 6 priority, so it always goes last. Like, I'm pretty sure always goes last. And uh, by doing so, um, it eats the hit, and then something gets switched in, which is most likely like, uh, I don't know, a Mon that's just going to totally get healed up all the way back to full. And then there you go. The, the Pokemon lives forever. It has a Magic Guard as well, which makes it so it can't be toxic. It also has Unaware as an ability, so if you really want to be a troll, you can also make it so... Uh, um, let's say uh, you have a Aegislash that's like plus 9 million instead of like physical attack or something. Unaware makes it so it does exactly the same amount of damage if it was at zero instead of stat buffs. So it can do that as well. It has a Moonblast, it has Aromatherapy, it has Wish Protect and Teleport. It is a painful mon to go against, but everyone uses it, so you just kind of have to deal with it. I think the best way to uh, stop this menace, this absolute menace, is to either just fully take it out, which is not going to happen, or just to make wish. Just don't don't use wish. Just make no, not wish. Teleport. Wish is fine. There are plenty of wish Pokemon, which is fine because when you use wish, you have to switch into the Pokemon, and then they eat the hit, and then they get healed up. Clefable, on the other hand, makes it so it's guaranteed the Pokemon gets to come in for free. Clefable gets to eat the hit since it's a tanky bastard, and then the Pokemon that gets switched in gets all his health back, or at least a fair margin of it. So this Pokemon is very horrific to go against, which makes sense why it's so high inside the uh, percentage usage rate. I don't use it as much as I probably should, since it is a crazy mon to use inside of Generation 8 OU. But uh, yes, this was the um, usage rates for the May 2020 tier base usage stuff. 
So we got to see what all the things changed. Now, I didn't do the one the previous month, but who knows? Maybe next month I'll do another one. Since they do this every single month, and hopefully Clefable either gets banned or it goes down inside of usage. When the DLC comes out, I have a feeling that it's going to drop down because they're going to add some Pokemon. At least I hope they add a Pokemon that's like this crazy steel type that makes it, makes it so Pokemon can't switch out or anything. I, I, like, I really wish. I really wish Clefable needs to be stopped somehow. So uh, comment below what you guys thought of this video. It wasn't very... um concise and i don't really know what i'm talking about too much but uh i thought this was an interesting topic since i'm a big fan of pokemon and i like to talk about it quite a bit so with that being said guys thank you for watching and keep on looking for my videos